Good morning, I hope you're all doing excellent. Today, if you've been following along, we are going to start converting our cooling system and intercooler system back to stock configuration after our V-mount wasn't quite working the way we wanted it to. But that's actually gonna be a pretty involved job today. So, right down here, I actually cut out pieces of the radiator support to fit the V-mount. So we're going to have to get a new um, piece welded on there so that we can mount it up nice and tight. And also the oil cooler usually mounts in this backward orientation, but we have it up in front. So I'm going to have to get that relocated as well so that we can try and fit our front mount intercooler. One of the goals of that intercooler is going to be retaining the really cool fog light so we're going to have to see some path for the radiator piping or excuse me the intercooler piping so we can avoid messing with all of that so right now i got as you can see the front bumpers off over there we got the radiator that's going in mocked up so i can start making the pieces that we need to weld on i'm going to start with that but i'm also going to go ahead and drain the oil because when i unbolt the oil cooler obviously you're going to have a lot of oil going everywhere so we'll start on that and lastly i think lastly I want to hook up a sensor on the block that should make the coolant gauge work on the dash because obviously one of the big challenges of this is that <clears throat> I haven't been able to really just take off with the car because I have to have the Haltech running because I don't feel like running a um, interruption in the radiator line with one of those fittings to run a coolant gauge. I don't know where it would go because I'm trying to keep this interior nice and clean. So I think I have a solution for that so we're going to be checking on that today as well. Well, hopefully today, if not tomorrow, because it's a holiday weekend, so we should be able to get this all done. So let me make these pieces to weld on here, and we'll start there. All right, so I just um, whipped up a couple plates here, which we're going to weld onto the actual radiator support. Just going to attach these nuts here so we have something to thread into, because I'm out of rib nuts. And then I'm going to prep the metal in there for you while you're doing that. Okay. We got our little patch panels clipped on down here. Jeff already started tacking that one on right there. Well, you already removed the clamp. It's already tacked. Yeah. Wonderful. So get those welded on and uh, should be good to go. And just like that, we've got the radiator supports rebuilt. Somewhat. No, yeah. they're there. They're there. They look a little messy, but you know we aren't. We don't have professional sheet metal with the actual bead roller to match the divots and stuff. But the welds are there. They're going to hold. There's more than plenty strong. So there, it's going to work. You just need to hit them with some, you know, spray paint. Make sure they don't rust. And that's about it. It doesn't matter how they look. They're going to be covered by the radiator as that's long true. as they're strong and they yeah. are they're strong but yeah we just need to make sure they don't rust that's the key thing right now yep so i'm gonna let them cool down and then i'll spray paint them and then i'm going to continue to work on getting this oil cooler out of here we've already let the oil drain a little bit but and then we're going to switch back to this oil cooler which is the same but it has these um i think these are mazda tricks or atkins rotary braided lines that go in the stock uh run length so switch to those and then I am actually going to go ahead and pre-bolt up some of the air conditioning stuff and then we'll start fiddling with the intercooler and see what we can do there. Making some progress, making some progress. I've got this condenser in, which is looks like it's right here. It's not. This is the AC condenser because I did want to get the AC components back in because you'd really need to do it bef before you get the radiator in and um, the oil cooler. So the oil cooler is back in in its stock location. It's it right there. Lines are ran, even switched over to the non-swirl pot water thermostat neck thingy. But before we get the radiator in there, we need to get the fan situated. And now I'm going to talk to you all about the diff, what's my plan for the fan. So I got another one of these. Um, this is a fan assembly off of a Nissan Quest, like 1996, 97, 98. And I used it on the first iteration of the FC the one that burned, but, um, and the other one still worked, but this cowl is a little bit melted from the fire. So I just decided, oh, get a new one. And I think I can make it attached, look at nicer. After all the things I've learned these years of working on the car. Um, this is the clutch fan. And 
What I want to do right now is talk to you all about a little bit about clutch fan versus electric fan, what to expect. And there's, since we've been struggling with this cooling system for so long, there's been a lot of people in the comments talking about the different options. And it's been a great discussion and I want to talk to explain some of that right now. So I'm going to start with the very basics because maybe whoever it is watching this doesn't know. First component obviously is your radiator, right? Now the radiator holds the liquid in it and the liquid itself is not directly cooled, right? The aluminum of the radiator, the heat exchange, is what's cooled when air passes over it and the fan pulls air through it. Then that cooling of the aluminum transfers to the fluid flowing through it, which goes into the engine and maintains the temperature. So, right, that's the basics. When you are running a clutch fan, which is this one right here, this is bolted directly to the water pump drive and it spins in here and you can see I can spin this freely. That's because this is a clutch. It's actually a viscous fluid in here and you can see this has heat sinks on it as well to absorb heat. And what happens is as this heats up, the liquid becomes more and more viscous and um, it starts to turn closer to the RPMs of this shaft. So in other words, it's always on. So when you turn on your car, immediately this fan starts spinning. So the aluminum of the radiator is constantly getting a little bit of extra cooling. So when your thermostat opens and the hot liquid starts to go through, it's already going through a cooled radiator. Then as it heats up and heats up, it continues to pull more and more. And clutch fans, yes, they pull a lot of volume of air and they have a lot of torque to pull that air, or CFM which is great, but you're going to get a more gradual or more consistent temperature range with your clutch fan, which is why some people are like, oh, they're always the best, but it's more about the difference between the way they work. Like the electric fan here, when you have it set up, especially on a standalone, it just turns off and on. So it has to reach a certain temperature, which it says, okay, I need to turn on. And then the temperature is going to rise just slightly past that because it's catching up with the duty of cooling down the radiator, especially when you're not moving. And then once it gets down below a certain point, it stops and the same cycle happens again. So you get more up and down fluctuation. So that's why you see less steady and consistent temperatures. It gives you more of a up and down, up and down, keeping you within a range, but not as smooth and consistent as the clutch fan. So for instance, some people in the comments you're saying, oh, I just stay at this temperature constantly. Well, you're probably running a clutch fan. If you're running an electric fan, it's going to hit a certain temperature, turn on the fan, it's going to go a few degrees above it, and then it's going to come back down. It's going to keep doing that same thing. And either one is fine, but when you don't want to run a clutch fan, it's because you don't want to put any extra strain on the engine because it's spinning that, that fan. And that's the difference. Now, I'm going to run this fan again, but the cool thing about this is I'm going to kind of run it like my clutch fan would be. So this is off the Nissan Quest, and as I already said, and it has two modes because it is both the condenser fan for the AC system and the engine cooling fan on those cars. It's also the same model that's on a Ford Taurus of some year. But this thing, even compared to Spall fans, moves air. It is a really good unit. You can get them at junkyards, but I got this brand new one trying to keep it looking good. But there are two speeds. I hold up three fingers. Two speeds. So I'm going to wire it in so that when the ignition is on, it runs at the low speed all the time. And that when it hits a certain temperature, the Haltech ECU will trigger it to go to full speed. And I'm going to use that by using the 87A pin on my relay and using a second relay that comes with ignition on. I'll wire that up a little bit later. But what's going to excuse me while I wipe my nose. <laughs> What's gonna allow me to do that is when I was running the two spall fans and the fan on the top of the intercooler with the previous setup, I decided, man, I need to get this DC power alternator. And this thing is a unit, it's only, it's 180 amps, which is way more than the stock one would be, which is not like as crazy as some of the other ones. Jeff just put a 300 amp on his car. But um, yeah, it's gonna take care of running that, uh, 
fan in the low speed all the time. And again, if I don't like the way it works, I just unplug that relay and then it'll go back to the system where it just turns on at 189 degrees, goes up for a few degrees and comes back down and it'll probably be just fine. But I'm excited to see how it goes. Now I need to fit this fan to that shroud and get it wired up. Almost done here with the shroud. I can show you here how nicely it fits all the way around, nice and flush. So now I need to figure out how I'm going to mount it, which is why I've left this one on. I cut the other one off, as you can see, and I've been using the sanding detachment to get everything nice and smooth. Cut out some extra space so that we can get the radiator hose on here, and it might need a little more, but we just do it little by little. And I put some rib nuts in here on these secondary mounting ones so I can just bolt them straight in. These ones already have M6 bolts for them. And it looks like I'm gonna need to make some mounts to hold this thing in place. Should be just fine. Might use these and just bolt something straight across here. Not sure yet, but this is much better than the first iteration I did because I actually measured everything out. Took off the right amounts to make it all run, look, blah, blah, sit nice and flush. So just gonna get these mounts done and then we should be ready to pop it in. Okay, finished. Here it is. Fit up is really great. So all I did is I took a piece of angle aluminum. I put rib nuts into the angle aluminum and from the inside of this shroud, I have flange bolts coming out. A little bit of mismatched hardware, which is annoying, but um, you know, it's gonna work just fine so got that on both sides and the fit up looks great so again i've got the variable speed controls up here going to work on wiring that up right now i'm just going to go ahead and get it installed in the engine bay and then i might be done for the day because i'm pretty tired okay it's the next morning i'm feeling much more energized yesterday got away from me a little bit and of course i got a lot done which was great but hopefully it all made sense to you in the video um i Went ahead and off camera, I did a couple things. I got the radiator put in with the fan on there and you can see it looks really, really nice. Even has a little warning on top still. Um, need to wire that up, but you can see how massive it is. Like this is a really good option for this fan. Um, and again, it's the dual speed fan, which is why I went with this one. I bought it brand new, so it's about $80 um, from Rock Auto, shipped and um, that's what I wanted to mess with this one again, especially since I had great results with it last time. So, um, inter excuse me, oil coolers in, radiators in. I filled it with oil. You can see the coolant there. We'll bleed it in just a little bit. And the other thing I did was, as I mentioned, I want to get um, the coolant gauge working. So I went ahead and I went down and I changed this sensor. This is the S4 one. And we have S5 harness in the car, so I just switched it out. Only thing that's different is the little connector. But this sticks into the block, and it's right down here next to the oil pressure uh, sender. And I got that in, and then I pulled this part out of my harness. So this is supposedly just the, this plugs in, and then this goes all the way down to a pin on the metering harness, not connected to the ECU. And if I can connect that to the right pin, we should be able to get the coolant gauge working. So that is one thing I'm going to be working on. And then, of course, I need to wire up this fan and get the intercooler in. So I have some straps here. I was test fitting some stuff earlier. The saddest part of this is that I'm going to have to lose the fog lights. There's no way around that. The second saddest thing is that I don't want to cut up this front bumper. So... We're going to have to transplant everything to the other bumper that I have already cut to clearance for that intercooler and the piping. The sad thing about that is that we did run that bumper into a wall when we were moving the car. So it's not as in good condition. I don't have any touch-up paint right now either, but we're going to go ahead and pop that on. I'll hit it with some 
polishing compound and see what we can work out. So if you guys want to see more about this intercooler install, um, we have a previous video on the channel years ago. You can go back and search that. But for right now, what I'm going to do is start cutting. I need to cut some of these tabs off and get this portion banged down so we can fit it flush. I also need to clearance out this little bar right here so that we can make it fit. And then gonna have to drill holes in this part of the chassis or whatever this is body so we can get the piping passed through, which is a lot of fun. So get to it. Okay, so it's been a few hours, but um, that's because wiring takes a long time. So these are just loosely put in here. So I am going with the plan I mentioned earlier to try and run low speed all the time and high speed when it hits operating temp. So it's a bunch of wires down here, but basically what you need to know is I'm pulling power right from here. Power goes into fan one, which turns on with the ignition on signal, which goes out of 87A on fan two, which should work. Then when it hits operating temp, the Haltech signal triggers this to go to the high speed. So I have the fan grounded out right here, and I have this little connector here. Um, it's all, it's just a generic one, but um, basically, as you can see here, my low speed goes all the way through to the green wire, and the red one is the red one for high speed. I'm going to get all this tidied up and, and loom it once I make sure it works. So I reconnected the battery, and when I turn the key on, it should... Fingers crossed, turn the fan on low speed. So here we go. Bingo. Hear that? There we go. Fan's running on low speed. That should be nice. So, again, that's my attempt of having the best um, mix between an electric fan and a clutch fan with this two-speed fan. So, um, now I'm gonna move on to the intercooler, but I am at a little bit of a miss of what to do. I'm kind of heartbroken about losing the, about losing the um, fog lights, and also I'm just nervous about cutting into the chassis some more, but I guess we'll get her done. There's not much else we can do at this point, so I'll be back with that. And sorry I'm not showing a lot of install stuff, but like I said, I've done a lot of this stuff before on the channel, just trying to make a good update with kind of like bigger strategy about what we're doing. Okay, I'll be back. Well, I've been making really great progress, um, but I ran into a bit of a snag, which is the hole saw I used to cut the passes through. So I got the intercooler installed. Let me start there. So it's installed nice and tightly. Um, the intercooler piping comes here and then it needs to pass up through so you can kind of see if you look that that um, hole is kind of marred up, but my hole saw that I originally used, I have to do another one over here as well, um, is not cutting through. And I'm just, I mean, I'm okay with the progress we've made because if you think about it, we completely uninstalled the, um, well, I did that previously, but completely reinstalled and redid the um, cooling system. And, uh, got some good things going but i'm gonna have to take a break right now and take care of some other stuff like enjoying my holiday weekend with the family so um anyway i'm gonna just go ahead and get the front bumper put on here because what i realized is i can just do like i have here uninstall the wheels pull the fender liner back and get to the remainder of the space i need to to uh, finish the intercool it needs to go up here out of the turbo, same thing over there, back into the intake. So I already started trimming up this piece for clearance. It's just got some paint drying on it so it doesn't rust. I'm transplanting all the good stuff off of the bumper that has already been clearanced for the intercooler. Make sure that all fits up so that'll be important as well. Get it all up there and then I can actually run the car NA because I can't really boost yet anyway. So I'll be able to test the coolant system, bleed the coolant, do all that productive stuff. And then considering it's a holiday weekend, I can't get the new tools to cut the holes for those pipes. So might as well finish up with this and then enjoy myself. Okay, it's been a long day. It's been a long couple days, but uh, here's where we're at. 
This is our bad idea, but this is just temporarily because as I told you, we don't have the intercooler piping coming out from here yet. We just want to drive it around just some test drives, leave the coolant system. That's about it. But the old rec front bumper's on, intercooler's in there. And also I did get the coolant sensor hooked up for the stock coolant gauge. So hopefully that works, which will be an exciting development of all this we got oil in the car we have cool into the system so i think we're ready to fire her up can you think of anything else no just as long as we replace the oil that was that's pretty much it okay i'm actually going to get the haltech so we can monitor the temperatures because we want to make sure that secondary fan setting comes on and then we'll give her a go okay haltech is connected you can hear the fan running already which is great Give her a crank. Okay, so the thermostat just opened, got up to 160. It dropped down to 158. Now it's passing through the radiator with the fan on low. So we'll see if we can get this to move. And then also, if you can see here, the coolant temp gauge is now working. So something that's gonna be interesting to see is sometimes I would take the car and just take it all the way up to the like, uh, car wash and let it idle even. And it wouldn't warm up all the way, it wouldn't clutch it. It's always on. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. And that was with the stock radiator. Pull the well, I had to pull the fuse on the fan to get it to warm up. It's at 180 now. This temperature gauge is starting to get towards the middle. So I'm going to run up there because it's set to start the second fan at 189. Let's see if it can even get to 189 without load. we're buttoned up here and ready to go so we're going to take a little test drive see how the cooling is working and just get the car out for a little go around i'm going to just go ahead and pop out get some gas real quick nothing too crazy i do expect intake air temps to be pretty high with um that patch tube we put in there but we'll see just got on the freeway just cruising cooling gauge is about middle just touching 170 something. Intake air temps are a little high, as I mentioned, but uh, this is just a test run mostly for the cooling system. So far, so good. We'll see how it does. Uh, so it's not even kicked on the secondary fan mode yet. So again, this is much like the clutch fan situation. 
So I just made it to the gas station. Um, about a mile journey on the freeway and everything, and we still didn't even open the thermostat. So that means a couple of things. Number one, um, the fan on situation may not even be the whole part of it. I mean, it's some of it, but also it's just that um, we have a much more efficient cooling system with this stock setup and that nice thick radiator. So that's helping a lot. I did also notice that um, just in general, it took more coolant than the system we had set up. So I think this is definitely the ticket. We just gotta get this intercooler finished up. Well, positive results and that's all we can ask for at this point. We had a good go with trying that V-mount intercooler and I think there's still a few things uh, we can do to make that setup a little bit better for the burnt FC because I still do want to use it. But we stripped this thing down, got the stock set up on here with the upgraded radiator, upgraded fan, and it's looking really, really good. So thank you guys for watching. More content coming soon. Check the links in the description below. And when they ask you, tell them you want more.